All right, it is time for checking in on library checkouts. Hey everyone, it is Shannon, and I'm super excited to be here and to share with you this video. This is gonna be my checking in on library checkouts number four, and I love doing these videos. Um, these are ones where I film them as I'm going back to the library, and I share with you what I'm returning, uh, and from that what has been read or unread, and then also what I am renewing and hoping to, to get in the next cycle of library borrows. This is the time it's, it's split down it's split down the middle pretty much um although I am very happy that I am returning a lot and from that I have read a lot currently I have 38 titles out from the library um there are which is a lot so let's get right to it into what I am returning and that I have read starting with the one the one ugh, this one's a little sad, but so it is interesting. I enjoyed the book. So How to Kill a Monster by R.L. Stein. I am working through the Goosebumps books, but this one is sadly overdue. It is the only overdue book I've had this summer. Um, I did have to post one on my library trip from last week to this week, and this was the only one that had holds on it. <laughs> so this one... This one, it's a week late. They're not doing fines right now because of everything, but still, I would have happily paid the fine. It was my fault that I wasn't able to go, um, and I'm thrilled that the 37 other titles I had had out were able to be renewed. So anyway, I really enjoyed this one. It was um, two step siblings who go to visit their grandparents, one of their grandparents, well, both of their grandparents, of course. Um, and um, and it's in a swampy area, so they stay inside a lot. And what do you think is inside? It was pretty fun. I had, a, it was very quick, uh, tip place, not over a long period of time, and uh, yeah, I really enjoyed that. And you don't see step siblings a lot, so that was cool too. And then I read another Goosebumps book, and this was The Beast from the East, which is now one of my all-time favorite Goosebumps books. It was so much fun. Um, I, I had no idea where it was going. I had no idea what was happening. Um, it's a bit absurdist in a way, and it deals with a, a game, and I loved it. If I had read this as a kid, I would have, like, made up, like, rules for the game that it had and different things. Like, I would have been completely inspired by it. I would have drawn some of the things that they had talked about and, like, worked on stuff and made up new stuff, like, all from, like, the spirit of this game. I might still do that. I don't know. Anyway, it was a lot of fun. I wasn't expecting it at all. And it's actually, these two are the last two I think I can get from the physical library. Oh, that might not be true. Oh, you'll have to wait for my, I forgot. I forgot. I thought of, uh, yeah, I thought of, I got a creative solution. We'll see how that works. You'll have to wait for my next library hall for that. I totally forgot about that. So anyway, but I'm getting close to the end of the Goosebumps books that are available at the physical library. So I will be mostly switching back to reading digitally. I'm hoping to finish as much as I can by the end of the year. Um, so fingers crossed that happens. So I've finished those. I also finished um, X-Files Origins Agent Chaos by Cami Garcia. This is a YA um, version of X-Files. It follows Mulder as a teenager. I think he's 17 in this. Yeah, 17 set in 1979, and uh, we follow him as he sort of finds out about a bit of a mystery in the neighborhood. I felt kind of complicated about this one on several different ways, but there's not tons of time because there's so many books, so I can't, I, sh I can't really go into it. I don't know if I did in a wrap-up. I haven't actually really done wrap-ups. Anyway, but I enjoyed the spirit of it. Um, I found the, the, the mystery itself was quite gruesome, um, and I wasn't expecting that. So there were a fair amount of things that happened in it that were very uh, peril-ish. And there was a, a, a re friendship with that. I was a little like, not sure how I felt about. Um, uh, and But honestly, one of the things that really drew, drew this down for me was there is continual... Um, references to a particular book in detail like and throughout and is very interconnected to the story and the book is the sixth book in a series that I want to read so I was really frustrated with that because I didn't want to not read it because I didn't want to not understand the book but I also didn't want to read about it because I didn't want to spoil the sixth book in a series I haven't started so that was frustrating if you want to hear more thoughts on that I did do a Goodreads review with spoiler tags for the things that were a little frustrating so unfortunately I only gave this a two out of five which is pretty low for me a two out of five means 
things. There's either something I really, really um, didn't like. Oh, that's subjective, but you know, it's true. Something that, or there's repeated things that bothered me or I thought were problematic. I wouldn't say this was problematic, but those are, that's what I rate a two stars. Either there's something that really bothered me or I really, really, really didn't like it, or there were repeated things that bothered me. So this had that, unfortunately. <laughs> but do I want to read the second book in this series? It's about Scully. Yeah. Yeah, even though I had challenges with this one. So anyway, so that was, this was just a random, like saw it on the shelf and I was like, so I'm still glad that I read it, but it, it was a bit frustrating. So, um, okay, what else? Oh, a Life in the Theater by David Mamet. This was absolutely delightful. This is a play about a young actor and an older actor. And it's scenes um, like either between scenes or after a play or scenes within a play. It was fascinating, beautiful, moving, frustrating, tense, lots of tension between two actors and their stage of the game and stuff like that. Oh my gosh, I want to see a production of this. I did find one. I'll put it up here. Um, but I haven't watched it yet. Um, Loved it. Absolutely loved it. I think it's the first play by David Mamet I've read, but I think I've read, I think Red Belt, the film he wrote, and that film with Tuatel Ejiofor, I love that movie. And it's very unique, especially the pacing of the dialogue. Um, so yeah, so more Mamet for me, please, I think. Um, also, okay, so on to some nonfiction. I read About Design, Insights, Provocations, for graphic designers and enthusiasts by Gordon Salchow. This is a nonfiction book about um, art and design principles. Um, and I actually, I didn't enjoy it as much as I expected. I oddly loved the introduction, <laughs> um, but I didn't, I didn't resonate with it. Some of the things I know, you know, from going to art school, of course, but I always like writing or reading nonfiction books about art. Um, but it was just a bit, I can't, well, it's been quite a while now. Because this I finished at my last renewal period, um, but I just I just needed a couple more days, so it's a little foggy, so I'm not sure. But I enjoyed it. Um, it was a different take on things, um, which I appreciated, but um, it didn't it didn't sort of hit me in the heart like as much. It was a much more analytical, which you know kind of makes sense because it's about design, but. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, so it was, I'm still happy I read it. Um, I also read Photo Booth, uh, a biography by Megs. I wrote it on the back here. Megs is, Megs Fitzgerald. This is actually a Canadian. This is a graphic novel memoir biography about photo booths, which is where you go and get your picture taken. Like, they often have them at sort of subway stations and it sounded like a lot of sort of bars or carnival type situations um, or just out and about. Um, this actually I felt was also a memoir about the author and their experience with photo booths and collecting and going to them, collecting and like, like finding out where different ones were. And it also was like a personal journey throughout many years. It was also, it sounded like it started as uh, it was also a bit of a Kickstarter. I don't know if that was specifically what they used um, to fund a trip to go to a conference, um, and the which was just going to be, I think, a series of postcards or something, and then it ended up becoming a book, which I've read actually several graphic memoirs or, or, or graphic works where that sort of the, the, there's actually another one in this set that is the same parameter. This one, actually, I didn't love it as much as I thought I would. One, it's kind of interesting that it's about photo booths, but it's all illustrations. So that's just interesting. Also, And also it's a bit more about history of the item. And I'm not as big a fan on history. So I, th I thought of it more like a memoir and there is memoir element in this as well. And I, that's the part I resonated with the most, but the history elements, I didn't resonate with as much because it's just not my forte. Or it's just not my realm of interest, shall we say. So, but I'm glad that I read it and, um, and it was uh, just a pickup from the shelf, which uh, was always, is always nice when that works out. Um, and I also read The Mysterious Underground Men by Osami Tezuka. And this is by the author who created Astro Boy. And you can definitely see a similar, Similarities in the art style. Of course, I shouldn't go that okay. And um, this is about someone who wants to um, uh, drill through the earth, I think. <laughs> and um, 
I enjoyed it, but it was, and I, I really appreciated the afterword on this one um, t for some context. Um, and uh, it was a, f it's a one shot story and um, I enjoyed it. Um, it was, the, the only thing is the title, they say the mysterious underground man, but mostly the person, if I remember correctly and it was interpreted correctly, the, the, the head of the underground men and the person they predominantly spoke to was a woman. So there was that. <laughs> um, but um, there's also like a rabbit boy creature that was delightful. Um, and uh, yeah, so, but it's a lot of sort of like adventure and chaos moving things forward very quickly, but there was also a lot of heart in this as well. So that was a really good one. I'm really happy I read that. Um, I also read three volumes of Blade of the Immortal, um, 25, 6, and 7. And so I'm continuing my journey on this. Sadly, I can't get my hands on 28 yet. The copies that are at the library aren't available and I am just going to kick myself if I can't finish the series this year. So anyway, this is a historical uh, adventure. It's kind of historical, like it follows a uh, Ronan, but um, like, I don't know how, how oh, I don't, I don't know how realistic it's supposed to be. I love the art. There's so much action. Oh, wow. It's really, oh yeah, no, that, that was a very bloody, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I can share anything. Anyway, I love the art style. Uh, lots of pencil work, lots of line work, lots of expressive movement. Uh, I just love it. So um, yeah, so hopefully I can get my hands on 28 and finish off the, the series because it goes to 31. So I have been working on that one for a couple years. So that would be delightful to finish. Um, I also read Andre the Giant, uh, Life and Legend by Box Brown. This is a visual... Uh, biography, I guess, of Andre the Giant, who was a wrestler. Um, and I, you know, I enjoyed, uh, I, out of all of the wrestling, I don't know, I, like, you gotta love Andre the Giant. Um, it's interesting, I don't remember him, they showed some stuff about him being a villain, especially versus Hulk Hogan, I'm like, really? Was that? <laughs> like, I'm sure it's correct, but I'm like, I don't, it's not the impression that I was left with Andre the Giant, you just liked Andre the Giant. Although that being said, reading this, there were some things that I was a little less sympathetic to. Um, not, of course, his situation because he continued to grow and grow and grow. And, um, and that, you know, was, had posed so many challenges, physical and otherwise, also how people responded to him, which is just you know, can be horrible. Um, but there were also some, you know, choices that I'm kind of like, well, you could have, you could have done that. So anyway, so I was like, uh, this is one of those ones where sometimes with biographies, I'm like, am I happy? I know more. I don't, I don't know. It was a, you know, it was an interesting read. It was a fast read. Um, but, you know, and it was a bit of a random pick. So <laughs> And a bit of a random response. So um, on to some more intentional picks. Um, I've re read Dinosaur Tales by Ray Bradbury. This is six illustrated dinosaur short stories and one poem and by Ray Bradbury. And I absolutely love this. This was a huge win. Ray Bradbury is one of the authors that I am working through reading uh, lots of their work. Like even, even the, all the pages have something on the sides. It's the same for each story. It's something different on the other side. But they have it on every page, and I just love that detail. Oh, maybe not every story. Oh yeah, they do. This one, and this one, the Foghorn, was made into a film. Foghorn. Um, was made into, that was the poem. Like, all different art styles. The Foghorn was made into the film The Beast from 20,000 Fathoms. So now I want to watch that. Especially because Ray Harryhausen, who did the introduction on this, um, did work on that. And he also is involved with one of the other books that I got. So anyway, this was a huge win. I actually read The Foghorn twice. I just really love Ray Bradbury, like without question. Some of these are more, some of these are adventure and some of these are more speculative fiction, thinky type stuff. Um, not that speculative fiction is always thinky, but you know, sometimes, you know, sometimes with stories like this, some are more adventure spirited and some are more a posing a question kind of situation. So this was a huge one. Also by Ray Bradbury, I read Switch on the Night, illustrated by Leo and Diane Wilton. And this is about a kid that I believe is afraid of the dark. Wow, this is, I read right away and I 
it's it's now it's been like four weeks so three and a half weeks so this was interesting I didn't resonate with me quite as much as I had hoped um, but it was still an interesting read um, and uh, I was really happy to have it available I was thrilled dinosaur tales is available honestly I would buy dinosaur tales that one was just so good I am running out of space here um, also I think my most recent finish is night pleasures by Sherilyn Kenyon this is the second book in the dark hunters universe or the first dark hunters novel as it says there I am buddy reading this series with Anita from Anita reads and we just finished this right before the end of the month and uh, it was a really good read it was a lot of fun there was so much more uh, world building in this one as opposed to the first one uh, fantasy lover which is much more paranormal romance they're both paranormal romance but this really expands the world and you find out so much of like different groups and ideas and it is it was a lot of fun so I'm really happy that we read that and I'm looking forward to reading Night Embrace which is the next one so those are the 16 if you're counting at home those are the 16 books that I did finish go me now I am returning four that I haven't finished which uh Four. I'm returning six that I haven't finished. Um, and that includes uh, Between the Acts by Virginia Woolf. Uh, this one is a like more literary fiction and I haven't started it. I'm not going to be able to finish it. I picked something else for more literary type stuff. So I just know I'm not going to be able to finish it. So I'm returning it. Um, Cubism by Ann Gan Cantorfuhrer Trier. Uh, this is, or Trier. Um, I have another nonfiction art book and I decided to go with that one. Um, and then also Nancy by Olivia James. This is a comic collection and I needed an N for my A to Z graphic novel and comic challenge. And I picked a different book for that. Are we seeing a theme? Um, I'm also returning Unmentionable by Therese O'Neill, um, uh, The Victorian Lady's Guide to Sex, Marriage, and Manners. Um, this one I've had out for a while and I haven't picked it up, so I think I'm probably not going to get to it. I have added it to my Goodreads and to my wish list on the library, so hopefully I will um, be able to pick it up next year. Um, and then also two from my second library trip. Um, these are now at the point where I can no longer renew them and I haven't got to them. So Fire and Ice by Rachel Spangler. This is a female female romance featuring a journalist and a curling skipper. And also Big Sex Little Death by Susie Bright. This is a memoir um, and I both of these I added again to my library wish list as well as my Goodreads. I did start both of these and they were both good. They just never made it into the roster which is too bad. This one is actually quite fascinating but it's also I, ha I don't know the uh, Susie Bright is an author and I haven't read any of her work so it was a little interesting yet strange to read a memoir about someone that I knew nothing about so that's that was part of the reason there. So those six I am returning unread. Unread. Too bad. So sad. And then uh, for the renewals. Oh my gosh. Okay. So there are... I'll do these first. So I am renewing... 18 I'm returning 20 and I'm returning and I'm renewing 18 of the ones that I haven't started yet I have Droughtlanders by Carrie Mack this is one of the oldest books on my Goodreads TBR I haven't started it yet I did keep three the three romances none of them I started Midnight Action by L. Kennedy Fire on Fury by Sophie Jordan and Never Judge a Lady by her cover by Sarah McLean I just didn't end up I, I was reading Night Embrace uh or Night Pleasures, which was the romance that I was reading, so I didn't get to a different one. I also renewed Fresh Romance. This is by a collection of authors, and it's a bunch of romance comics. And then also Ray Harryhausen. Oh, an animated life. This is so heavy. Um, so this is um uh, autobiography memoir. Ah, is that it? Is that the Beast from Twenty Thousand Fathoms? I borrowed that from, uh, or rented it from Google Play. I hope to watch it soon. Yay! So I actually think I'll watch the movie and then start this. So those are, and that's actually not too many. So those are the six that I haven't started. And then I have one, I have a couple special cases in this situation. <clears throat> I did renew Ibsen and Her and Galilean, uh, which I have finished, um, but I have post-it notes and I want to pull some quotes from this. I was quite affected by this one 
mostly from reading the afterword and I didn't want to return it <clears throat> until I had pulled those notes, especially since one of the things that it quotes Ibsen as saying is that he is here to ask questions, not give answers. And that really resonated with me because I really enjoy Ibsen's work. And, but, and I think sometimes it's nice to read stuff and have answers. But there's also something really powerful with something that poses questions, not in a leading or a confusing or a gotcha way, but like a, you know, like let you really think about it way. So I am still really thinking about it. So I have my notes and um, which I take while I'm reading. I do a little character card. And this one was very interesting. Um, and so I'm still processing it. So I did finish that one. Um, I have two, oh, well, those are a special case as well. Okay, so let's continue with the renewals. So I also have a philosophical inquiry, um, the origin of our ideas of the sublime and the beautiful by Edmund Burke. This is the more literary work that I decided to go with instead of the Virginia Woolf because I had already started this one, although this one is nonfiction, but you know, it's still, it was, they're sort of the same, they take the same amount of reading energy from me, so I decided to go with this one. I'm also currently reading The Upside of Unrequited by Becky Abertelli. This is a YA contemporary, really loving it. Um, Two Fish, a poetry book by Jaine Akio Afura Chalombe. I did start this one, and this is the first in a set that I started right before the, the, like a week ago, and I put to the side because I needed to finish other things first. So I could have finished it by this return period, like honestly, I could have finished it in the next 20 minutes, but I decided to renew it and get to the things that um, I need to read right right now, even though it's right in the switch over between the two months and right at the end of return period, this I could renew, so I did renew. Uh, that is also the case for Drawn from Life. This is a nonfiction art book about different art styles. Oops, nudity. I always forget. Um, North's um, Two Suitcases and a Stroller Across the Circumpolar World. This is a series of postcards as the author travels the 60th parallel. It's great, but it's very hard to hold hold on my hands. So I have to, I'm reading that one slowly. I'm also started uh, Dead Voices by Catherine Arden. Uh, this is part of the Booktube SFF Awards. It's a sort of horror, probably fantasy. Haven't gotten far enough in it to know yet. Just got to the sort of, oh, it's like a spooky ski lodge or resort kind of situation. It's good. Um, Fables, 1001 Nights of Snowfall. Um, this is the 7.5 in the Fables uh, comics series. And I'm not loving this one, but I will finish it. <laughs> so those six, that's six, seven, seven, those seven started but haven't finished. And then also have a bit of a weird situation because I renewed stuff early, I ended up maxing out the renewal period on two books so that they're actually due uh, next week, I think. And... So I only have one week left, so I'm not returning them, so I'm going to have to make a special trip just to return them, which I try not to do. Um, you can have library books out for three weeks here, uh, but because I renewed them early, they ended up on their last renewal earlier than I expected. So these two books are Affliction by Russell Banks. Um, this is a thriller. Uh, and it is made into a film, and that film won the Oscar for Best Supporting Actor, which is one of my film goals to both read Oscar-winning films um, and watch films that have won for Best Supporting Actor. So I'm only 100 pages into this 400-page book, and I've had it out for, like, two months, so this is very slow going. Also reading North by Northwestern, A Seafaring Family on the Deadly Alaskan Waters by Captain Sig Hansen, who was on uh, one of the captains from The Deadliest Catch, um, which is a TV series, which, and I'm really loving this one. I just had, I, I realized I can only read mem one memoir at a time, so this ended up being pushed and pushed and pushed, so I only have, so hopefully, I don't know, I don't think I am, I am not feeling that it's likely that I'm going to finish either of these 
in the next week, but it is the goal. So we'll see if that happens. So there you have it. Um, so the numbers yet again, if you're curious, I have 39 titles, 38 titles borrowed. I am returning 20, 16 of those I have read. And then, so that leaves a remaining 18 titles that I have renewed and I'm keeping um, 14 I have renewed and shared. Uh, two I, have renew I haven't renewed and I'm returning next week. And there's also two that I renewed that I haven't shared but I am keeping for myself they're just they're they're for other reasons and so I'm not sharing them and it's okay to not share everything even though we are on social media you know um, they're for personal reasons so I did not uh, feel the need to share them and that's okay and it's okay to do secret reads um it's not I actually haven't even started any of either of them so anyway anyway it's nothing weird or anything it's just personal and sometimes it's fine to keep that to yourself so anyway wow that is a weird note to end on I'm really happy with how my reading went this um time it was actually four weeks as opposed to three weeks um so that might have been the reason why I got through I think a bit more than normal um but yeah I have 12 holds to pick up I have no idea if I'm gonna get stuff from the shelves I I usually make a list and have a plan and and stuff. No, I just I this the past couple of weeks have been a bit challenging uh, more th and so I am a little less organized and um, that's just got to be how it is. So it'll be really interesting to see what I pick up. <laughs> <laughs> could be anything, could be nothing. Maybe I'll pick a number, maybe I'll pick a color, maybe I'll pick a section. I have no idea what I'm going to do. No idea. But I know that I'm going to go to the library and I'm thrilled about that. And I've been really happy with how my reading has been going. And I have two more trips. And so things are winding down. Um, so I shouldn't get all of the books. I shouldn't get more than I'm returning. So I shouldn't get more than 20. So that's one limit I know is true. Although, do these count? Because I'll return them in the interim. Okay, no, 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 I'm already cheating. I'm already cheating! <laughs> Alright, I hope you enjoyed that. This was a really long one. Sorry about that. It's a lot of books to get through. And um, yeah, I will be back soon with another video. Thanks so much for watching.